Here is a little extract from Kid Normal and the Final Five. Uh, in this chapter, the Super Zeros, our heroes, and their teacher, Mr. Flash, are in a deserted, creepy school on a secret, secret mission. There are no spoilers in this, but it's a little bit of adventure. Uh, and it's part of chapter 14, The Curse of the Flying Wombat. Okay, hang on, before we continue, uh, what, so what, what do we need here? What about I need? Mr. Flash! Mr. Flash! Mr. Flash. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need um, Murph, Billy, I mean, basically, everyone's in this. Everyone's in this. All the favorite right. characters are in this. You're going to yes. meet all of our favorite characters uh, in Kid Normal. Here we go. The five super zeros, followed closely by Mr. Flash, peered around the corner into the reception area of the school. It was large and dimly lit, deserted save for a few chairs, a desk against one wall, and a wooden crate standing incongruously on the floor near the main doors. I don't like this, complained Hilda. It's too easy. What's going on? Nelly squeaked in agreement, and one of Billy's fingers inflated as their footsteps rang eerily in the silent space. There was a shuffling noise from up ahead and a muffled squeaking. Everyone froze. What was that? whispered Murph, dropping into a combat-style crouch despite his total lack of any martial arts ability. It made him feel a bit better, though. There's something here, whimpered Billy. Two more of his fingers ballooning. Something creepy is here. I can feel it. We're gonna die. They ducked behind the disused computer desk and peered out. The scuffling and squeaking continued, echoing back from the silent walls. Creepy, creepy, creeperson, moaned Billy. I hate this. Murph shushed him with a hand, peering at the wooden crate. A flap was open at the end nearest to them, and inside he could make out two tiny points of light. Look, he hissed at Hilda, who was crouching beside him. There's something there. It's a cat, exclaimed Hilda. A fuzzy face gradually became visible in the gloom as the mysterious creature inched towards them. It's a bat, contradicted Billy. Don't be silly, countered Hilda. What sort of bat walks on four legs? Warm, said Murph suddenly. What do you mean, warm? Hilda asked. That's the sort of bat that walks on four legs, Murph replied, pointing. The animal was now out in the open, regarding them with its bright little button eyes and sniffling its nose adorably. A wombat, said Hilda. Well, that's something you don't see every day, unless, you know, you're a wombat who runs a mirror shop. There was a click from somewhere close by. The wombat crouched lower and began to quiver. Its eyes lit up an eerie red colour. Oh no, now it's gone all creepy again, wailed Billy. What in the blithering blazes is this little fuzz muppet doing here? Bulldozed Mr. Flash, stepping out into the open and walking confidently towards the wombat, which was now bearing its surprisingly large teeth and making a noise that sounded a lot like... Sneeze! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not entirely certain that's a good idea, Mr. Flash. Hilda began. <laughs> Cannon Mr. Flash back over his shoulder. Don't be such a pathetic pangolin. I'll have this little pom-pom dealt with in two, two shakes of a lamb's. But they never discovered which particular part of a lamb Mr. Flash thought would be the most rapidly agitated, with a rousing battle cry of... The combat wombat launched itself into the air and attached itself firmly to Mr. Flash's moustache. Uh, mayday! Mayday! Spotted Mr. Flash as he staggered backwards, the wombat worrying at his facial hair like a terrier with a gravy-soaked sponge. <laughs> Get off of me! So, sorry, what? Said Hilda, dithering nearby. I didn't catch the last bit. Get! roared Mr. Flash, lifting the wombat up slightly by the tail to live his mouth unimpeded for roaring purposes. It's off of me! Oh, right, said Hilda brightly. Roger, Wilco, who wants to take this one? My horses are probably still a bit tired after their key retrieval mission. Uh, I could have a go, suggested Billy, screwing his face up. 
No, Billy! yelled Murph quickly. They were already battling a berserk wombat. The last thing they needed was to be suddenly battling a giant berserk wombat. I'll have a go myself, decided Murph, looking around the desk for anything that might prove a useful anti-marsupial projectile. Nelly, you make sure nobody else is coming down the passageway to attack us from behind. Mary, help her, he told them. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw them dash back to the corner and take up defensive positions. Mr. Flash, meanwhile, was having a bad day. A crazed wombat was making a spirited attempt to gnaw his face off. His day was not improved when a large box of paper clips hit him squarely on the forehead. Ouch! complained Mr. Flash as best he could through a face full of wombat. Sorry, replied Murph. My bad. Uh, I'll aim more carefully with the next one. C could you duck slightly, Mr. Flash? T to the left a bit. That should do it. Sleep! 